Dear beloved in the Lord, may you know God's rich grace, mercy, and peace as it comes to the hymn and the, from the hymn and the, and the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for sending us your Son, Christ Jesus, and we thank you that he has won for us salvation on the cross. Help us each day to just bring honor to you in the way that we live our lives, the words that we speak. Help others to see you through us, to hear you through our voices. Lord, lead us always that we may proclaim your good news no matter where we are or with whom we are with. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Amen. Feet. Generally, when we talk about feet, we don't think about them very much. We might think about them if we're runners and our feet ache, or we might think about them if we jump or if we dance, but otherwise we don't think a lot about our feet. And if your feet are anything like my feet, you also don't like to look at your feet very often. You probably don't think about them as beautiful feet. Maybe after a long day, they're sweaty and stinky. If you're like me, maybe they get dirty because you don't like to wear shoes. Or maybe if you want to put your best foot forward, you have that foot covered. When you think about feet, you don't often think about beautiful feet. Now, it may surprise you, but there are actually foot models. There are people who are paid for their beautiful feet. People who will model shoes or sandals, ointments or creams, orthotics or shoe inserts. Beautiful feet. But not the beautiful feet that Paul was talking about, are they? That's not, in fact, at all what Paul had in mind. Because if we look back to our epistle from Romans chapter 10, and we hear Paul's words, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news, we realize that he's talking about a messenger. He's not talking about someone who's going to have beautiful feet. He's talking about someone who's going to have nasty, dirty, stinky, bruised, sore, cut feet. Maybe ugly feet. In that day, there was a system called the cursus publicus, or in other words, the public way, the people's way. Later, it was known as the Latin way. And this was very important to the Roman Empire. And Paul must have had this in mind as he's preaching to the Roman church because the cursus publicus, the Latin way, was in the way that all the goods, everything that needed to travel across the empire, the Roman Empire, they would travel on this Latin way. They would safely get from one end to the other. They would travel from relay station to relay station. But most importantly, messages that needed to get from one end of the empire to the other would travel on this Latin way. They would travel from one end, stopping uh, along the way at various relay stations, making sure that the persons, the persons were safe who were carrying the messages. Most messengers, they would ride on horses or travel in carriages, and they'd get to about 50 to 60 miles a day. But if we think about Paul's messenger, a messenger who walked, who was on his feet all day, what we know as most biblical scholars have looked, they, they call a day's journey between 20 and 30 miles. So let's say, for instance, that Paul was writing a letter from Rome to Corinth, and it had to travel along this Latin way. Well, it'd take a maximum of 32 days, assuming that would assume 20 miles a day for 655 miles. So it might take a couple of weeks. Now, probably Paul would have sent it via ship because they also did that. But that's not really what I want to get at today. Because when we think about it, Paul really wasn't focusing on, well, even the feet of the messenger as being the most important. The outward, outward feet of him, anyhow. He was talking about the inner beauty of that messenger. And this idiom may be familiar to most of you, and maybe in different form, but true beauty comes from within. Most of you have heard that before. Well, that, those words aren't specifically in the Bible, but that concept is in Scripture. In Peter, 1 Peter writes, Holy women, do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing that you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable, be imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. Notice Paul's or Peter's talking about their inner beauty. 
He's talking about inner beauty as Paul was speaking about the inner beauty of those messengers who bring the good news. Because God doesn't look on the outside. Each of you is created by God. Each of you is beautiful because you are His creation. But God looks at the heart. God looks into your heart. Take, for instance, Jesus in Matthew chapter 23. He was speaking to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, the Sadducees. And He called them whitewashed sepulchers. Now that wasn't a compliment. What He was saying was on the outside, these Pharisees, Sadducees, teachers of the law, they did lots of wonderful things. They offered sacrifices. They went into the temple and prayed. Maybe in front of people. They led lives that were above reproach. But in their hearts, they were dead. In their hearts, they were wicked. In their hearts, they were anything but God's people. Jesus, He judged the hearts of people. God judges the hearts of people. So too, Paul is not talking about the, inner be- or the outer beauty of those feet, but he's talking about the inner beauty of the person who bears the good news. He's talking about the person whose life has been changed by the Gospel. He's talking about a person who is, cannot stop say, be, preaching and speaking the Word of God because once they've received God's Word, they want to share it. And he uses himself as an example, doesn't he? He thinks about his own life, the way that the Gospel changed his heart and his life. He makes the assumption that everyone is going to be like him. That that once you hear the gospel proclaimed in your life, once you've heard it preached, once you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are going to go out there. You are going to be God's people, his messengers. You are going to be his disciples who carry God's word to the ends of the earth. He made that assumption because he knew how important it was for people to hear, to hear the words of God. He knew how important it was for people's lives to be changed. Notice how he closes our epistle today. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Paul knew this. Faith comes by hearing. He knew how it changed his life, but it wasn't just Paul who knew this. Notice Jesus' own ministry. Day in and day out. Not only did he do these awesome and amazing miracles, healing the sick and driving out demons, but for three years, He educated the disciples. For three years, they went with Him. Even in our Gospel reading from Matthew 14 for today, notice it was the Word of God that gave Peter the confidence, the faith to step out of the boat. It was when Jesus said, come, that Peter stepped out of the boat. In our Old Testament lesson for this morning, it was not a mere action, an earthquake, a wind, or a fire. But it was that simple whisper. Faith came by hearing. Remember the story of Elijah? He had just defeated all these, uh, these prophets of Baal. He had call, called down uh, uh, the, the fire from heaven. But Jezebel was going to have him killed. And he had had enough. He ran off into the desert. He wanted to just go out there and die. Notice he didn't bring any provisions with him. God sent an angel to bring him food. And then told him to go to the cave. But God knew man does not live by bread alone. And he came by in that silent whisper. And he restored the hope and faith through his word. Faith comes by hearing. Probably most of you know this story, but in Acts chapter 8, there's a disciple by the name of Philip. And he's just coming down the road. The angel of the Lord comes to him. And the angel of the Lord tells him to go. Go to this specific place. And he goes. He just goes. He doesn't ask questions and say, wait a minute, why are you sending me there, God? He goes and he finds this Ethiopian eunuch. This Ethiopian eunuch, he has a copy of Isaiah before him. He's got the word of God in his hands. And he's reading and he's reading it. He's trying to learn from it. But he can't understand. He can't understand. And then Philip comes. Philip explains it. He Faith comes by hearing. And in that hearing, that eunuch He was baptized and his life was changed forever. In that hearing, his faith was changed in Christ. How beautiful are the feet of Philip, of Christ, of Paul, as they proclaim that good news. How beautiful are your feet? How beautiful are your feet? Do your feet reflect the transformative beauty of the Holy Spirit living in your heart? Do your feet in every step that you take, do 
Do they reflect the beauty of Christ's love for you? The forgiveness of sins that He won for you on the cross? In every step that you take, do other people see and hear Christ? Do people hear faith come to know Jesus as their Savior? Or are your conversations, instead of filled with words that lift up, support other Christians, are they filled with gossip, belittling, tearing others down, hurting the good name of another person? Do you stop people when they gossip? Focusing on God's Word and the Eighth Commandment. Do you build up brothers and sisters in Christ? Or do you silently whisper behind their backs saying, well, they should have made this decision or they should have made that decision and they would have been fine if they would have done that. Do you encourage brothers and sisters when you see them hurting? Or is your own self-centeredness, your own self-interest more important? Do you proclaim God's good news so that all may hear Him speak through you? That all may see Him through your actions? Or do you bury it deep within your heart? Keeping it for yourself. Hoarding that treasure. Holding on to it. Most of us, I dare to say, if we're honest, would confess that much of, our, much of the time our conversations are not filled with those words of lifting others up, are not filled with the words of Christ, but instead are filled with self-centeredness, our own selfishness, the feet that we have, they, they don't bear the good news, but they bear anger and frustration, selfishness and self-centeredness. The feet of our feet are, are not those beautiful feet, but our feet are those nasty, dirty, broken feet, calloused and bruised, worn out feet. What about your feet? Are they beautiful feet? I suspect most of ours aren't. That's why I'd like to take you back to John chapter 13. To the night before Jesus was betrayed. In John chapter 13, we have this beautiful celebration about to happen. Jesus and his disciples are about to get together to celebrate the Passover meal. They're about to come together and they're about to celebrate one last time before Jesus bears the weight of the sins of the whole world. But before they eat, Jesus removes his outer cloak he ties a towel around his waist and he gets down on his knees. He doesn't stand and tower over other disciples. He gets down on his knees. Then one by one, he gently invites each of the disciples to come to him. He removes sandal after sandal, pours water over those feet. With his very own hands, he takes their feet in his hands and he wipes them clean. He dries them one after the next, until we get to Peter. Peter says, whoa, whoa, indignantly, indignantly, he says, Jesus, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answers him, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. So then Peter, still not quite understanding, invites Jesus to wash him his whole self, not realizing that in that act of washing his feet, Jesus is cleansing him, not on the outside, but more importantly, on the inside. Each of the disciples cleansing them. And in much the same way, our Lord stoops down into our lives. In much the same way, our Lord stoops down. And he doesn't merely clean our feet, but he cleans us body and soul. And not just with water, but with water and the word he comes to us. And, he, and when you hear those words, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Even if it is not your own baptism, when you witness the child being baptized, it reminds you that you were baptized into the name of the Lord. You were baptized and by water and the word you were cleansed. And made a child of God. Water in the Word, your feet were made beautiful. Water in the Word, you were prepared to proclaim the good news. Water in the Word, the Lord changed your life forever. He has called us and He has prepared us to go out, to be those messengers of His good news. He has called us to go into a world that is lost and dying. He has called us by the power of His Holy Spirit to proclaim the Gospel, to share the Gospel, to share that beautiful message of salvation. 
but he's also called us to face persecution. The world may or may not accept the gospel message we bring. The world may or may not be willing to hear what they need to hear. But he calls us nonetheless. And he says, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever who would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. If we follow in the Lord, if we trust in him, we may not be accepted by others. We may be rejected. But he calls us just the same to proclaim the good news. Because in that proclamation, faith comes by hearing. Hearts and lives will be changed. It's not a matter of if. They will be changed. Not by our power, not by our words, but by the Spirit working through us. Right now, around the globe in Iraq, there are those who believe this message so strongly that they're willing to die for it. Last week, I'm sure most of you saw that in Iraq, there were eight Christians who in the same way as their Savior was crucified, they were crucified for being Christian. They were crucified for their faith in Christ. Later in the week, hundreds, hundreds of women were kidnapped. They were kidnapped because they were Christian women. Iraq's own human rights minister said this, these are the words of Camille Amin. We think that the terrorists by now consider them slaves. And they have vicious plans for them. We think that these women are going to be used in demeaning ways by those terrorists to ser satisfy their animalistic urges. That's Iraq's own government. That man's not even a Christian man, but he recognizes that these women for their faith, that that's going to happen to them. But they were willing because they believed so strongly in the promises of God's Word that no matter what evil is in this world, no matter what evil is wielded by man and woman, that our God is greater and our God is stronger. They believe so strongly that they are willing to go to the crosses, that they are willing to be kidnapped and die for their faith. How beautiful are the feet of those who proclaim the good news, those who live their faith. How beautiful is the promise that they have that our Lord stoops down in their lives in the darkness and the evil that is all around them. How beautiful it is to know that He stoops down. When they fall, He picks them up. When we fall, He carries us. Our Lord Jesus Christ has given us hope and promise. A hope and a promise that is worth dying for. A hope and a promise that must be shared. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news of Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. Please go to the Lord with me in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we give thanks to you for your precious death and sacrifice on the cross. We thank you, O Lord, that you were willing to stoop down into our lives, that you were willing to cleanse us, washing us and making us your very own. We thank you for the promise of our baptism, that we have been washed and made clean, that you have chosen us to be with you forever. Forgive us for those times, Lord, when our words are not words of yours, when our actions are not actions of yours, but are self-centered and self-serving send us lord to be your people for we know that faith comes by hearing for we, for we know that your spirit changes lives not by our words but by your words lord give us beautiful feet feet and beautiful hearts that we may proclaim your gospel message this we pray in jesus name amen